Okay, so to start drawing the head, I would like to first start with a circle. And at the beginning, the circle might be a little bit complicated to draw because, well, it has to look pretty good. Well, this is a good one. Or you can cheat using Photoshop. <laughs> That's why we are here. So we have a circle. The next step from the circle is to divide it in half. And for this, we have to take into account two things. The direction where the face will be looking and uh, the angle, direction and the angle of where it's looking, the face is looking. That will give us an estimate and an idea to start placing the features and all that. So let's start dividing the face in, in the half. But thinking about, think about Sorry, think about the three-dimensionality of your head. Think about the form and divide it. We have to, go, we have to change this <clears throat> from a sphere, from a circle to a sphere. Once we have established the direction where this head is looking to, we have to divide this, this side of the head. And to divide the sides of the head, we draw a circle. Draw another circle that will give us the side of the head. Uh, because the head is not a circle, it's not a sphere. We start as a sphere, but it's not a sphere. We have to chop the sides of the head so we can make a head more human-like. Because the head is not rounded. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a circle, it's more like an egg shape and there are different definitions for that. So as we shove the head we can start doing the next step. We have our points here of guide as a guide to where to start dropping the line. We start dropping the lines and the, as we drop the lines we need to drop these lines down, all the way down. this much, you know. Uh, the side, the line of, on the side will go almost to the bottom of the, of the sphere. And the distance to find the chin, it will be one, two, and three. We, ha we can divide that. In, we divide this in half and then we add another half there. And then we draw a line. That line Will be, will be the chin. The next step is to connect these these lines and then you will have your head, your basic head to start adding all the features and the rest which I'm gonna be explaining pretty soon. Okay? Well this is the, the, the main idea that you wanna have you want to have clear in your head. There's uh, also a rhythm that go from here, from to from on the side of the face. I go from this from this point to the chin, and that will give us our, the side of the head. That it will give us another section, and will give us more structure for the side of the head. So those are the most important things to keep in mind when drawing the head. I like to do it like in three quarters because it's easier to understand the three-dimensionality. Well, for this, in, in here I will be drawing the same uh, structure that I did before in the head, but I thought that it would be nice to show you different variations of angles and stuff like that. And it's a little bit speed up, but as you can see, everything grows from the head. And from that point, I mean, from, everything grows from the circle, the sphere. And as you project the images, you can have an idea of that drawing that you want. And the more you do this exercise, you will be more confident drawing the head. And with time, you will be only doing the lines that you need and the lines that you 
uh, want to draw or you need to check the lines that are required for your drawing. And you can check the, the areas that are, that are not correct by doing a little quick under a sketch or, or figure it out on the top of a new layer. And even though this exercise is like a pretty structure male head that is a really kind of like superhero uh, way of drawing a character. And the, the, the idea of this that you can really see the change of planes and you can have an idea, better idea of the structure because male has more uh, sharp angles and are more, it's more easy to see the structure. So that's why most of the drawings that are like or like educational are done in this way because that, that's the way you can see and and make sure that you are breaking down things like the side or the front side view and make sense. But as you go and you draw this this exercise and you do uh, I don't know hundred of these exercises, uh, you will be able to to play with this more and be able to to design different shapes for your head so i definitely will encourage you to to spend time doing this also check other resources of of how people draw the 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 the, the head but this is a good one i think this is a is a is a, is a good one that gives you like the main structure and and as i say in the intro video you have a you must have this sense of three-dimensionality and mass. You have to imagine that what you're doing is not drawing, but more, um, more you're drawing on on top of the surface. Like if you were doing like a sea brush sculpture kind of thing, and that approach will help you to visualize better things. And if you find yourself a little bit stuck, then you instead of doing these drawings out of your head, like I'm doing right now. Uh, try to get some reference of faces and heads and why not do the structure on top of the photo in Photoshop and you will have and you will understand more. That's another way of doing this exercise is, is that way. Have a nice head reference, something that is clear and on top of that make this, this structure and you will see oh now I see where, where in why this line lands in this place. Or why is this or, or that in that way, and it's not a it's a, you know, you can use the reference to support the the, the knowledge, and uh, even drawing on top of the of the drawing is good because you are really breaking down that structure and not making it up in a new drawing. And um, just to keep clear for the side view profile view of the head. It'll be pretty much the same, but a little bit more flat. So you get your circle, and then you divide it in half. You chop the side of the head, which is pretty flat. Then you drop the lines down. Drop the lines, and you drop the lines. Okay. So from here to here, we have like this section, this section, and this section. Then we can draw the jaw. So that will give us the profile view. This way. That will give us the profile view of the head. Another way to draw the profile, which is an easy way, is draw a circle, drop the front line, divide it, divide this in half here, drop it, and then from behind, follow, drop this line this way. That's a good way to find quickly the jaw. So again, draw a circle, drop the front, and drop it from the back. That's an easy way to have a quick uh, front uh, profile view. 
So if you want to do a profile view, that's the, the best way to do it. I recommend you to practice this as much as possible so it becomes a second a second thought in your mind. It's not something that you are thinking too much because when I draw, I do not think about these things anymore. But because I have this on my mind and I have done a lot of exercises, I've done of I have done a lot of these um, practices and I encourage you to fill pages of your book trying the figuring, figuring and getting used to this technique of drawing uh, the head because it will give you an easy shortcut and um, and you can use this the last trick I show you in a, even in three quarters you can have your ball divided this way you can drop the line here and you can come from behind and establish your your head you see so those will be the more the, the, those will be a good to approach or, or, or a good approach to drawing the head and figuring out the jaw, it has a rhythm and it kind of like falls from behind the head. So you can go as simply as this and you already have a head. Divide the center, find the side. But as you go, you can, you can stop doing certain lines you don't need to plot every single line for to find different things. It's so the more you do, the more you will find that well, I can I can actually start in a different point. Okay. And from this point, uh, I would like to take on the on on the first on the things that I find the most important to draw the head that will help you a lot to find the proportions and. One of the points that I find important is the ear. The ear is a great uh, place or uh, or mark on your drawing, where you can base many proportions just using the ear uh, height or space there. Because the ear will be on if you draw a line from the top of the ear and down the ear, that space will be. Uh, you, you it will it will uh, it will tell you the relationship of the eyes on the nose. So always the bottom of your ear is your nose, the bottom of your nose, and that's a good 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 way to find the nose that you need. You can make it uh, probably bigger. That depends on them. But if you have that, then you can have a, an idea where to project that line and find the nose. You see? And even if you are working on a, in a different view, let's say you're working and you have a three-quarter view of your head. You see sometimes I just draw from the from the from that point. And if you have uh, that point of reference uh, that is the ear, you'll find that it's easy to translate that and have the space and the proportions right for your nose. Okay? So it's always a good reference or mark to have for your nose and eye relationship. And, and, and the next step, I think uh, the next proportions that are really important or tricks for the head that are really important is when you draw the eyes. And you can you have different ways of doing the eyes, but the rules are like one eye. Between one eye, there's another eye. That will 
keep you a nice, a nice distance. Okay. Also, to find the nose is from the from from the edge of the eye down. There's another proportion, and from the eyeball, the iris down. You'll find the mouth. Okay. So these proportions are very, very, very important to keep a nice relationship of your face. A little bit creepy, but you know what I'm talking about. So if you push this line, the the, the smiling too far, then it will start feeling weird. You know, it it won't feel like a the proportion will be a little bit off. So that's a good way of figuring out the proportions of the nose and the and the and the mouth, especially the the the, the width of the nose and the mouth. Another way of tackling tackling the the features for the head when you want to have a more um, easy way shortcut to do it is to have to mark and create a triangle. Sorry, the a triangle. So if you have a triangle then you you will have your face, your the relationship of these points. So it's a good way to have a It's another way of of of, uh, of drawing, especially when you are like doing a face like this, and you want to place uh, the the features and everything. You can go ahead and then do the same. It's a it's a it's a it's a good way of of having that relationship. It's a triangle between the eyes and the mouth. There are many ways of, of uh, controlling the proportions, but I will say that these are the are really good rules to follow when doing the head. There are many ways of doing the proportions. There are eyes, measurements, and everything. But for me, I found that these guidelines for the nose and for the mouth are great. It will it will help you to find things in 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 different positions and perspective. Uh, even here, I can do that. I can drop down my line, and that will tell me the the nose. How how far can how how wide is that nose? An example: If I have an eye here and I draw a line down, then I can have a mouth, and it will keep me. It will keep, it give you a um, a space, a control space for you to to draw the features of the head. Okay. And in this uh, sample, I'm going to draw <coughs> one head, one head. And I'm gonna go through the whole process of drawing the head. There might be steps that are not explained yet. I'm gonna go over them those later on. But I will show you the, the basic structure that I'm doing, which is the same draw the circle, uh, drop the lines, and uh, keeping the proportions I was telling before of the ear. Uh, I didn't draw the ear yet, but I know kind of like the, the, the proportions already. So those angles and all those marks that I do have a relationship on the structure. So that's why it's important, I was saying before, to the, be conscious when where, where is the side and where is the front uh, side of the of the of the head. And with the with the size of the head and everything constructed and you can add add hair on top of that. In this case a little bit saturated. But well, this is the rough sketch. And even if you don't get it right at the beginning, you can go and go over again in a new layer 
and then define and then draw better your your character. As soon as you have an, a nice structure under, it doesn't matter. You can change uh, characters, no shapes, eyes, and all that. In this case, I did still like uh, a male, but more like a soft expression, more like a anime manga kind of style, and because that's kind of like the style that I do. But as as you can see, if you have a good structure, then you know where to place the elements of the of the picture. And and in the previous section, I talk about the, the triangle and how the triangle can dictate uh, where to place the eyes and the mouth. And the rest is just details that you can see. Is more um, cleaning and 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 all of that. It's just that the structure. If you have a clear structure, like, like, as I said, then you have a successful drawing and this is not only studying on your own but the using references and pictures